Welcome to another video explaining the universe using the particle model. Well, today's video is about the senses, a study in biology. Biology? What am I doing? I'm an electrical engineer, not a biologist. But I have stated in almost every video that I am explaining the universe using the particle model. And biology is part of the universe. In fact, uh, in many measurements of bodily functions are made with electrical instruments. But you're right, I'm not a biologist. As a circuit designer for 40 years, I'm quite comfortable with circuit theory. Unfortunately, my explanations of biology as a mechanical process will be limited, but I'm going to conclude it to be complete. So let's first look at what a biological process is. From Wikipedia, biological processes are the processes vital for living organisms to live, and they shape its capacities for interacting with the environment. Biological processes are made up of many chemical reactions and other events. Chemical reactions. I've covered chemical reactions in batteries, in electrolysis, cold fusion. And uh, it, so biological processes being chemical reactions may not so be far off. And these events are involved in the persistence and transformation of our life forms, including metabolism and homeostasis. And as a basic uh, reminder about G2 gravity in interactions that are part of the biological process, in the particle model, G2 gravity is the nuclear binding force the atomic binding force, and the molecular binding force. It's the force that holds things together, including you and me. Interactions of the particles with objects and interactions of atoms and molecules with other atoms and mo molecules are mechanical. These interactions are true in physics, in chemistry, and in biology. Here is a good starting point. I recommend this uh, video. It's actually a series of four videos put, by, put out in 1997 by the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. The title is Senses and Sensitivity, uh, Neural Alliances about Sight and Sound. This is the link. This one link gets you to all four videos. And the four videos are each one hour long, so they're quite extensive, but uh, yeah, very informative. Today's video will uh, be discussing the first one, sensory transduction, called titled Getting the Message. Then there's the science of sight, getting the picture, the science of sound, how hearing happens, and neural processing, making sense of the sensory information. Okay, the first one is titled Sensory Transduction. And so what is transduction? Well, a definition of transduction as a noun is the conversion of the stimulus from one to another. And in many cases, you'll see in the film, it's described as that the stimulus is converted to an electrical current. And here's a very generalized uh, symbol of transduction. Here's a hormone or some environmental stimuli being captured by a receptor. This is a receptor. And it's captured. Then a transformation occurs, a chemical event, the generation of, some, uh, of a signal that causes a response. A uh, simple example of that is the knee jerk. Uh, test that your your doctor might do, and I'll cover that at the very end. 
But the video talks about a, a number of things, but the main emphasis is on the sense of smell, the olfactory nerves. And here's a picture of a rose and someone uh, breathing in and, and getting the uh, uh, these uh, odor molecules into the nasal cavity. Uh, we're in there. Uh, this circle rep rep shows the uh, olfactory bulb. It's a little bit uh, too much in that picture, so let's blow it up a little bit a piece at a time. This is a rose. It emits some odor molecules. They come into your uh, nasal cavity and they stimulate tiny little hair-like uh, objects. This olfactory bulb sits on, inside your 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 uh, uh, skull. This white part is skull, and this is the olfactory bulb. This is more detail, and, and down here we have a picture of these little. Uh, hair-like molecules. Uh, here's the bone. These are inside the navel cavity. This is inside your brain. These are the odor odorant molecules. They call them here. And as they come by, they get trapped. These black parts, I know it's small, are, are, are shaped and geared to capture specific odor molecules. Some are red, some green, some blue. And, and the one that comes by and happens to will hit will trigger. That's the, uh, the capture. And as a result of a capture, a signal is sent. Now, in this case, they have many, many different uh, ones of these. In this picture, they only show three. Maybe this is sweet, this is sour, maybe this is... Uh, uh, stinky, putrid. Who knows uh, what they, what all the different ones are, but they're they're spread out and they get routed to the right ones through the uh, routing of these fibers here. So once that's captured, you have a transduction which changes this into a a signal. And and if you read this, I, I have to move, leave for myself. Olfactory receptors were activated and sent electrical signals. That's what that says. Sorry for it being so tiny. This is an electrical signal. So what happens here? The particle model, in my opinion, when two molecules, the odor molecule and then the uh, receptor molecule combine and they're vibrating you can you then that vibration you will release g1 particles g1 orbitals that were part of the molecule and part of the receptor get released and start flowing at a very high speed up through the neural fiber to the brain very simple transduction mechanical. And this is a picture at uh, 21 minutes, 21.56 minutes before the end. That was the timestamp I captured at the time I got this uh, drawing of the electrical pulse. It shows voltage here and the distance here. Uh, how this is exactly measured to know what's inside the neuron is I don't know. I don't have that answer. Uh, this is an explanation, their explanation of how it propagates. Well, my explanation is when those G1s release, they're already moving and they propagate along the fiber. And then I redrew that. I, I can't, I, I, this is the same figure here. I have made a reference point here where there are zero G1 particles. And when the uh, uh, odor molecule is first comes in and is maybe not even fully captured, there is some interaction. There could be a few G1 particles released. But then, of course, at the peak, when it's uh, fully uh, captured and interacting, releasing G1s, you'll have a bunch of G1s flowing. And then as it trails off, uh, there's some more until finally there's uh, none left that, could, that can be done. 
or maybe a, a residual one. So here there's none, and here there's a few, or just one. And they, these are G1 particles moving through the fiber at speed C, ultimately end at the brain, triggering that sweet, sour, or stinky smell in your brain, uh, uh, telling you what the odor is. It's very easy to see in the particle model how a stream of G1 particles, which can form any waveform, can easily move through the fiber. These fibers are very small. The G1 particle is very small. It moves very fast. Okay, well, he talks about a couple of other uh, scenarios. So here's one, just one picture, where a male moth is seeking a female moth. The female moth emits pheromones. These are odor molecules that the moth detects. The male moth has an antennae, and he's holding a branch here, a, dead, a branch off of a tree, and he, he's stating that as... As the moth flies, he's kind of sweeping back and forth, flying, and this antenna is looking for the female pheromones. The female, on the other hand, his hand here is moving. The female, on the other hand, he says for some reason, and I don't get the, I have the whole picture, that it bounces up and down, back and forth, moving in some direction all three dimensions, uh, making it easier for this antennae, which doesn't have much surface area, but the combination of it being swept and the combination of the hormone of moving around in all directions makes it uh, very efficient enough so that when this pheromone is captured, the male gets the sense that a female is nearby. Well, and if, if he senses one or two, he moves in that direction. And if he, if he loses it, he, just, he turns, I presume, to find it. And, but if he moves in the uh, direction and he gets more and he gets more and more, he knows he's getting closer to the female. Very interesting process, just as a sidelight. Uh, our lady friends, they, uh, they tend to put on some perfume that uh, us guys tend to sense. And, and uh, if, if you're walking down the uh, street and, and you walk, uh, you may not see a female, but all of a sudden, uh, it's happened many times. It happened to be in the elevator. I stepped into an empty elevator. I knew there was a lady there before I was. Yeah, I don't know. Females, moss, and female humans are maybe not so different. And here's a knee-jerk test called the no-brainer. In fact, the link that I have here says reflexes, no-brainer. This is, this is quite interesting in, in, in that sense. Here's the a little, little hammer the doctor uses to hit this patella tendon. When you hit it, that's a mechanical action. They're actually forcing that tendon to uh, bend, uh, compress. In the process, it, re, it sends a signal to the spinal cord. Well, when you, when, when you do that, my opinion, as a, in terms of the particle model, you're again releasing G1s, and they're going through this uh, neuron to the spinal cord. But, but the interesting point is they don't go to the brain. In fact, I was curious about that, so I looked up at several, more than several uh, descriptions or, or diagrams. None of them go to the brain. What happens is the G1 particle, goes, a stream of particles goes to here, and I'm sorry, you can't see it that close, but it's connected directly and goes right back and stimulates this muscle curious to me is that it's the same stream of particles going around here to here to stimulate that muscle. What the speaker tells us is that when that stimulation happens, the muscle, there's an action, probably chemical, right? You're adding 
some G1 particles which try, try to uh, become orbitals and, and what the, he says they, the fibers restructure. And in this case, they have to restructure to get smaller. The muscle is going to get smaller. And it, while, while it gets smaller in size, it, it's going to move the tendon this way, causing the knee to go up. Mechanical hit, G1 particles are routed right around back to the stimulus and, and you've got uh, a, a knee jerk test, a no brainer, an instantaneous response. Amazing. Well, in summary, it seems that chemical reactions in batteries, electrolysis, cold fusion, and biology can be described by the particle using mechanical interactions. This may not be the answer in, for biology, but it is a reasonable possibility. My name is Bobby Hilster, and I am your particle model guru. Tune in next time when I'll explain more of the universe using the particle model. Thank you for your attention.